Hi pals, John here with The Lens Power, and this is a video on Liz's new favorite piece of equipment, the Nikon ZF. Here we can see the fantastic retro stylings of the camera, heavily inspired by older film cameras, older 35mm bodies that Nikon produced many moons ago. Starting from left to right, our controls are as follows. This is our PSAM selector, so it allows you to move from your manual, aperture, shutter, programmable, and auto. This dial here is your ISO selector. If you have it in C mode, that actually allows you to sort of have more refined controls and auto options there. And then to get out of that, you need to press this little silver button on top and that will allow you to rotate through. Moving across to this side of the camera, we have your shutter controls um, all the way. Everything in red is one second or longer. And then on this side of that, we have your fractions of a second. So 1 1 25th, 1 third step locks it into place. And then you're actually able to change the shutter speed on the back using this dial. And that'll give you third step. So instead of going from uh, 250 all the way back to 1 1 uh, 1 25th you can actually go to 200th of a second uh, 1 80th of a second etc we also have options for your maximum sync speed your timer and your bulb for your really long exposures so there you go this here is your on off selector and your shutter release and also here, we have a little dial that allows you to move through movie, camera, and black and white mode. Next up, this little window here will actually tell you your aperture, as there's no manual aperture on the lens. So this is your information right there. And then this last dial, is your exposure compensation. So if you've got something set in auto and the images are coming out too bright or too dark, you can use this to compensate for the exposure that you're getting. On the back, we've got very familiar dials to most cameras these days. Playback and delete options up here. Um, your info or function or cue button, depending on which brand you're familiar with. A little dial here to change settings, menu buttons, and a little joystick to move through them. This button here, which will cycle through the different display options. Um, so automatic display switch will switch between the viewfinder and the rear screen. Try and get a good shot of that for you guys. But if I keep pressing this, um, it will actually cycle through like monitor only or viewfinder only options or I believe that might be just off at some point. There you go. On the front of the camera and if I remove the lens we'll be able to see all of it. I'm just going to set that gently to one side. Uh, we've got a nice big sensor. One thing I do love about Nikon's mirrorless cameras is how large this opening is. When you compare it to their F-mount cameras, it's, it seems gigantic in comparison. And so controls, we have this one here. This is the lens release. So this allows you to actually unmount the lenses from it. This one here is a programmable button. It comes out of the box, out of the factory reset as a white balance option. And then this one up here is aperture control by default, but Again, with it being a mirrorless camera, pretty much all of these are reprogrammable to however you see fit. Let's pop this back on there, cover that sensor up. So there you have it. That's the, the basics of this camera, at least visually. Um, we do have a nice rotatable articulated screen that has a good click in place that's not going anywhere anytime soon. And yep, just flip that around. So if you really want a film style look, you can just pop that in there. 
you do still have your electronic viewfinder in here and uh, yeah that, that'll be how you take pictures got a couple of different ports on the side we've got a itty bitty HDMI port mic and headphone options as well as the now common USB-C port right there that will allow you to charge it with Nikon's newest iteration of the batteries and then speaking of batteries I'm just going to turn this off in here we have our battery compartment as well as a micro SD card slot and a regular SD card slot this is a feature packed camera it's not just aesthetically pleasing they've actually gone to pretty decent lengths to make sure that this is a camera that functions really well also you have a 24 megapixel sensor so it's not the highest resolution sensor on the market right now but that's fine most people aren't going to need 40 50 megapixels and it has the same autofocus system and that is in the z8 and z9 so it's a very capable camera both for stills and video in addition to the 24 megapixel sensor it also has the autofocus system out of the z8 and z9 so you know it has plane tracking animal tracking face and eye tracking um, it will even track people through crowds which is incredibly impressive on top of all of that if you do want more than those 24 megapixels there is a high resolution mode where it will take an image shift the sensor slightly using its inbuilt uh, in-body image stabilization take another image repeat that a whole bunch of times and then you can stitch them all together for a 96 megapixel image so if you really do need that that resolution then you do have that ability to get that in this camera we're going to take a look at a couple of the settings that are different for the ZF than they are on some of the older cameras we're going to have a look first at the way to set up auto ISO I should note that to begin with the camera is set to C on the dial on the left hand dial this is where it can be controlled from the camera body as opposed to setting one of the um, number of stops of uh, sensitivity that it is uh, being controlled by so if you are in that setting and you want to come in here and pick out exactly how sensitive you want the sensor to be you can do that you can pick any of these options here as well as four uh, upward extended um, settings and three lower extended settings but you can also come in here and turn on the auto ISO so if you are the kind of shooter that likes using auto ISO this is where you need to go you have the top dial set to C and then you come into the ISO sensitivity settings and turn this on and then you can adjust how far you want this to go so if you want your maximum to be for argument's sake 2000 you can change it so it's different if you're using a flash maybe you only want half as much and you can also set a minimum shutter speed as well um, this just gives you the ability to fine-tune how your auto ISO setup is going to work so that's the first one next we're gonna have a look at the pre and post roll options so let's come into here and we're gonna come down to this section right here and we have options for pre-release burst and post-release burst if you are in the continuous 30 mode you have the option to capture pre and post release bursts this the way this works if you are in that c30 mode and you are half depressing the shutter release button it will continue to capture 30 frames a second even though you haven't got the shutter fully depressed and this option here 
says how much of that you should keep or the camera should keep, if any. So if set to one second, it will keep the 30 most recent frames in its buffer, waiting for you to fully depress the shutter release, at which point it will commit those 30 frames to your memory card. And then there is also the post-release burst. This is a similar feature. Um, you can capture up to one, two, three, or max, which happens to be four seconds worth of footage after you have released the shutter release button. So those are a couple of the major changes from previous Nikon cameras that appear in the menu system. The Nikon ZF available right now on our website, thelenspower.com, with rentals from two days all the way up to 90 days. If you've found this video helpful or informative, or if you just like our lovely orange backdrop, please consider giving us a like, subscribe, share, tell a friend, smash a bell, and whatever it is that your favorite retro video company is saying this week. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Thank you.